Hello, once again, uh, welcome to Theology 333, the African American Religious Experience. Uh, I am Professor Greg Jones, Gregory Jones, and I am bringing you session 10. We're going to talk today about uh, secret societies, and specifically we're going to focus in on the Prince Hall Masonic Order uh, as a way of explaining how uh, this uh, secret society uh, parallel the development of the, the African American church in the 19th century. Uh, before I do that, I want to show you a couple of books that I want you to pay attention to. I'll put on reserve uh, the African American Christian Heritage Encyclopedia by Marvin A. McMickle will be one work that I want you to uh, pay attention to and uh, use as a resource as well as, uh, and I will be putting this on the internet um, uh, for your possible purchase, or I will provide some um, uh, copies out of this uh, educator source book, The African American Heritage, done by Johnny uh, H. Miles, Juanita J. Davis, and Sharon uh, E. Ferguson Roberts, and Rita G. Giles. Uh, this is a very, very uh, helpful book if you want a general assessment of the African American heritage. It's a wonderful resource book and source book for teachers and instructors, and it 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 is it, plain and and uh, set forth in a very, very, uh, very uh, simple way, so that you can get uh, uh, you can get source material about periods and times in the development of the African American community. So. Those two works are very important works that uh, you might want to uh, attend to as I put them on reserve or I make them available to you uh, in uh, the future or in this session. I will also make sure that those uh, works are there for our online uh, convenience. Okay, today we're going to talk about Prince Hall Masonry. We're going to talk about Freemasonry a little, but we're going to focus in on Prince Hall. Let me give you uh, some basic background on this, and then we'll get right to our uh, lecture. The freedom and association that Southern black families could enjoy also enabled them to form hundreds of larges and fraternal orders and secret societies. The Prince Hall Masons, uh, a fraternal society founded in Boston in uh, 1775 by a free black uh, named Prince Hall. Um, also established uh, itself in the South. Uh, the Freemasons were an international secret uh, fraternal art dedicated to the principles of brotherhood, charity, and mutual assistance to members. In the United States, the establishment of a separate black Masonic order became necessary because white Masons refused to admit black men. This is out of Canaan Land, A Religious History of African Americans by Albert J. Robito. Essentially, what Roboto is saying here is that Prince Hall founded uh, the Prince Hall Masonic Order because of the nature of racism in America, not allowing Africans or African Americans at this time to be a part of the Masonic Order. Uh, and so he created his own order. So uh, I will be uh, giving you some information on the development of uh, the Prince Hall Masonic Order and how it comes to be in the African American religious experience. Um, what I'll be getting, uh, giving you uh, information out of is a document that I produced, uh, the contributions of the Prince Hall uh, Masonry to African American religious experience, and I did it for a, um, a professor, Julia Speller, at Chicago Theological Seminary, where I attended. Okay, uh, I want to begin to share with you some basic information about the origins and values of Freemasonry. Freemasonry comes from uh, basically comedic principles. I want you to understand that, you know, when we talk about Freemasonry, we think that it's a, of European design, but it's not. Um, when we talk about secret societies, some of the oldest secret societies and secret organizations can be founded in uh, Comet, in what we talked about very early in this course in terms of African origins. Uh, the comedic um, and uh, uh, the comedic principles are part of the founding or foundational principles for secret society, specifically uh, the order of Freemasonry. And um, what we see there is we see a, a borrow. Uh, we see a borrow there, and uh, 
the basic cosmological, for example, frameworks of religious perspectives were stolen and distorted for use as primary organizational infrastructure for the European model of Freemasonry. Uh, these basic principles are much older and can be found in uh, in a comedic uh, cosmological construct and comedic value system. And so the historical process of the development of Freemasonry is directly connected to the moral cultures uh, dominated by Western European aggressive cultural infestation. Europeans distorted very sensitive and foundational principles of comedic worldview. Um, this way of understanding reality is direct uh, opposition to the imperialistic obsessions of the European mindset that we see at that time. Um, this most notable, uh, this, this notion of Cartesian and comedic reality has always been, a, a been builders, gills, and symbolic expressions of the basis of formation of what is called civilization. Um, these constructive principles basically were a part of the development of our uh, notion of uh, secret society in comedic, comedic uh, development and uh, the development of African uh, ancient civilization. And so the morals that we see coming from uh, uh, European Freemasonry uh, is very, very much uh, distorted. Uh, one of the first things that I want you to understand um, in terms of Freemasonry in general is this notion of um, speculative masonry and then operative masonry. And then when we talk about operative masonry, you're talking about the science of builders, uh, the use of um, the basic tools of building and the, the use of the kind of math and science for raising up a building. We see this early on in civilization. Speculative masonry becomes a, a way of using the operative tools as a way of talking about the building of society. So when we talk about the use of the compass and the, and the square, the 24 inch square, we're talking about using operative tools to give speculative principles to the Masonic understanding and the Masonic order. Uh, we, what we see, uh, for example, in the early development of Freemasonry, and I'm just going back to give you this basic understanding so that we can uh, uh, basically look at the notion of, um, of how masonry comes to be a part of the African-American religious experience. Um, early on, we see how the Knights Templar and the Hospitalators are two organizations. Knights Templar is a, a mercenary organization basically for the Catholic Church. Uh, the Hospitalators are uh, where the word hospital comes from. Uh, basically were a group of uh, individuals, an uh, order, if you will, that would follow the battles on the battlefield. And basically they would kill the maimed and then they would take uh, possessions from the dead on the battlefield. Uh, they would try to help those that were wounded, not toward death, but if you were wounded too severely, they just would put you to death and then they would basically take possessions. These are two organizations that carry the most imperialistic tenets of the European mindset to new aggressive heights uh, as the First and Second Crusades. This was in the First and Second Crusades, sought new lands to plunder in the name of the uh, Catholic uh, Christian monarchy. The Templar and Hospitalis Order was founded in the year 1118 in the aftermath of the First Crusade. Uh, these mercenary orders uh, were some of the first founding groups that began to borrow from as that there was more and more incursions into the African continent and Moorish continent, the Mediterranean. Uh, they, as more lands were taken, basically they utilized some of the symbology of some of the conquered communities as a way to form themselves out. And, and a, a quick way to understand this is we look at the all-seeing eye, we look at the, uh, the pyramid, say on the dollar bill, you see some of those borrows uh, that uh, cultural bor borrows taken in order to establish institutions in European community. And, you know, we still see some of that today. Um, moving on, though, we want to look at the processes. How, how does Freemasonry then begin to uh, influence African American religious experience? Now, you got to understand that, you know, it, it, as it moves from that, that, that historic uh, mercenary kind or imperialistic tenet 
to a, a, a more humanistic kind of organization, secret society, it begins to borrow uh, um, some positive notions of, of, of building and upbringing in society. It's about the business of creating an uh, infrastructure of leadership that allows individuals to be able to function in the social milieu. Um, we want to see how uh, Prince Hall gets connected to this, and we want to take a look at it. And it's very important that we look at it because it parallels some of the development of some of the African-American religious communities we see in America. And it speaks to a particular issue that we see happening in the American culture, American society today in relationship to the tremendous class difference and almost class warfare that we see in the African-American community today. It speaks to some of that, and we need to take a, look, a sharp look at it. Uh, the process of the development of the uh, Freemasonry uh, w w was connected to the development of slavery in America. And so at the time of Prince Hall, we see uh, the beginning of black attempts to enter into modern society or into society through Masonry. It goes back to uh, as early as 1775. In that year, Prince Hall, uh, he's a West Indian from Barbados, uh, uh, he's, he has free status. He's a leather worker. He even has a shop called the Golden Fleece. Um, uh, he and 15 other blacks, who are, are merchant marines, so to speak, uh, were initiated by the British Army Large uh, stationed in Boston. Uh, from that group, in 1776, came African Lodge Number 1. Uh, the new lodge's bylaws embody two ideal principles uh, to the founders of Freemason among African Americans. First, the Masonic promise of a new society was stated as all preferring among us is by real worth and uh, personal merit only. In other words, those individuals that are around you have to have real value and they have to have real worth as, as an individual in relationship to others. Uh, that's the first one. The second idea that black Freemasons were an elite was incorporated. We will admit no one not having a tongue of good report. That simply means that uh, if there was one individual that thought that you didn't have a good report, then you could be kept out of the association. And so this, these two ideas, you're looking for people who have personal mer merit and personal worth, and you have to have people who are of good report. It's kind of where Prince Hall is beginning to seek this organization. Uh, the provisional African Lodge number one often became a full Masonic Lodge. Uh, African Lodge 459, when in 1787, Prince Hall uh, applied for and received a charter from the Grand Lodge of England uh, itself, the mother, one of the mother lodges of uh, Freemasonry. Uh, so we, we have some of the origins there. Uh, we take a look at that. Uh, we want to take a look also uh, at some of the other things that are happening in terms of why uh, Freemasonry becomes so important to the African American community. The other thing that I want you to pay special attention to is that there's a parallel. Uh, uh, Prince Hall also becomes a preacher, a Methodist preacher, and we see early on when we look at the list of who is involved in the secret society, it's a parallel in terms of the leadership of that time in the African American community. Many uh, Masons are, are also uh, also uh, African American preachers who are participating uh, in developing churches, in organizing churches, in uh, 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 presenting themselves as leaders inside the community. Uh, the vision of Prince Hall was to use Masonic principle to open doors of influence to serve the interests of African Americans and gain status as full citizens of American society. This was supported only by a few of the white Masonic brothers. This is something that is basically happening inside the African American community. And so what we have to talk about very briefly is this whole notion of assimilation and accommodation in the African American community and the pursuit of middle class values. And so one of the things that Prince Hall, one of the strategies, understand African American people are in, in America now, Africans are in America, they're trying to figure out how do we survive how do we resist? How do we survive? And how are we liberated from racism? Racism is a constant in the context that they're living in. One of the ways that Prince Hall is thinking of, of overcoming this racism, this specter of slavery, is to become 
uh, middle class leaders in their community to own property, to be educated, and to be organized. And so he sees uh, uh, Prince Hall uh, masonry, or masonry in general, but Prince Hall masonry, his particular form of Prince Hall masonry, as a way of addressing this. And the reason why he creates the African American uh, uh, Prince Hall lodges is because he has kept out Albert Pike and the whole notion of Freemasonry uh, by white Americans it sees uh, bringing Africans and African Americans into the, uh, the organization as something that is not, can't be tolerated. And it's because of the nature of what uh, racism is doing to American culture, American society. It's the same specter of, of division and, and uh, horrific relationships that Africans in America have today with whites in America or Europeans in America today is that separation that's taking place because of the legacy of slavery and the impact that slavery is having on American culture, American society. Um, we want to move on and talk, and talk about the teachings of the middle class values. Um, when we look at the teachings of the middle class values uh, uh, that Prince Hall presents as a, a means of, uh, uh, of development, we see that parallel the development of what we call the mainstream church. The mainstream church uh, basically is a church that says you need to be educated and you need to be uh, well healed. You need to have economic uh, uh, sustainability. Uh, you need to have money and you need to have uh, education. And essentially that's going to be your ticket out. Now the masses of African American people don't necessarily get exposed to either. And so one of the, the issues that uh, is raised about uh, Masonic uh, secret order or secret society or fraternal order is that it presses people out from away from the masses of the community. And so we are going to take a look at that because we see churches evolve. evolve. We see community churches being very different than uh, mainstream churches that are trying to assimilate and accommodate American culture, American society. And the, the only... Uh, middle ground is the advocacy church and the advocacy church comes alive specifically because of the issue we see for example let me give you an example of that and we'll talk about that in depth when we look at chicago and we see them struggling in terms of dealing with their educational issues there we see a kind of advocacy community starting to develop among the teachers and among the, the students and the, the people who had closed uh uh, uh, uh schools there they're beginning to organize themselves and deal with that issue on uh, the moment, in the moment, so to speak. Okay, so uh, let's look at one more piece in relationship to uh, this, uh, the, the teachings of middle class. It's still, it's still a struggle that we see happening in the development of that. I want to share one more thing with you with this and I'll be done. Um, if you look at uh, uh, the middle class values that are being uh, taught by the secret society of Prince Hall Mason, we see uh, masonry also is instructing black adherents to a variety of social roles. So when we look at the list of individuals who are involved in uh, uh, Prince Hall Masonry, it's a huge list of people who are upwardly mobile uh, to the extent that masonry has been able to teach and provide a stage for the performance of um, social roles, leadership roles, it has created both a major outlet for the social, logical, and psychological needs of its members and produced a large reservoir of, of experienced leadership. And so um, what, you, what, what we got out of masonry was the development of black leadership. And so let me end by just giving you a list of just several people who are, are involved in this, this great organization. I think it's a great organization. I think it has done historically um, more to create leadership than any other organization in American culture, American society. However, at a cost, uh, at a cost, it, it has in, in effect um, separated or provide a separation between the masses of African Americans and those who would seem or perceive to be upwardly mobile. And so those bridges have to be built back into the, the masses of African American community for um, Prince Hall Masonry to truly become the effective organization that I think Prince Hall envisioned it to be. Let me just give you a few lists and then we'll be done. Robert Sinstack, the founder of the Defender. Richard Allen, uh, the founder of the, uh, the Bishop of the AME Church. Uh, Count Basie, um, Tom Bradley, um, Nat King Cole, W.E. Du Bois, 
uh, Mega Evers, um, Timothy Thomas, uh, Alex Haley, uh, William Handy, uh, Lionel Hampton, uh, Benjamin E. L. Hooks, uh, Daniel Chappie James, the general, uh, uh, Thurgood Marshall, Benjamin Mays, uh, Charles Randall, Sugar Ray Robinson, um, Andrew Young, uh, Scotty Pippen. Uh, almost any person that you see having uh, status is also connected to Prince Hall Masonic Order. And so we want to thank uh, Prince Hall for developing an organization that created a whole reservoir of leadership. And I want you to pay special attention to the parallel of the development of Prince Hall Masonry and the evolution of the institutional church, which we will talk about next time. Thank you.